Yeah, everybody. I see you three people. How's it going? I'm going to lower this music a little bit. How's it going, everybody? Happy, what is it, Tuesday? Here we are. Day two of our, sh not shut down, but day two of our New York shenanigans. Give me a comment if you can hear me. Give me a comment if you're here. This is the now the time where I'm going to take my phone and share out that we are going to be together. We have a special guest that's coming on a little bit tonight. So that's going to be fun. Let me share it. I always go on here at the top of a live. And here's an opportunity for you to do the same if you enjoy what we do over here and being together for COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. If you're down with love, if you're down with positivity, if you're all about us making it through this thing that we have going on as hopeful as possible, then feel free to share it like I am right now. Oh, okay, I'm going to go on here and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it. Let's see here. Share it to my Andre account. And then I'll also share it to the Love City account. Uh, let's see here. Chime in and let me know how you're doing tonight. I've been here for the last four days every night at 8.30 to share the love with all of you that I have in my heart and to feel your energy of what's going on. I believe that all of us, all of us are going to make it through uh, coronavirus 2020 and, and I think that we're going to do it stronger if we're actually together. Um, and if we hold each other in our heart very intentionally um, every day, if that makes sense. Chime in. Let me know who you are, who's watching, and where are you watching from. Would love to chat with everyone tonight about yeah, where your heart is. And hopefully hold space for hope that we're going to make it through together. Should I call uh, our special guest that's coming on tonight? This is a person that's been watching for the last couple days. And I was like, hey, why don't you come on and chat with me? Like we did last night. Last night we talked with Davi Cohen. And tonight we're going to talk to another special person. If you would like to be a special person and come on and spread love and positivity and light, um, yeah, just text 404-585-1278. If you didn't grab your pen and your pencil, you can grab it now. 404-585-1278. That is the LCA number. That's where we can be reached 24-7. If you're an artist, <clears throat> excuse me, and you're in a tough spot, we got you. Listen, I'm just a human being just like you. I'm not a fucking unicorn. Um, I'm just out here trying to do what I feel in my heart is the right thing to do. And sometimes that looks like, I mean, it could look like a lot of things. But tonight it looks like us being here online together, just chilling. I have no makeup on. I have no contacts in my eyes. And my beard is scruffy. And guess what? Here we are. Who's just commented here? Ah, oh, this is... Carrie's back. Thank you for joining again tonight, love. It's been really good. It's been really awesome showing up with you every night. Um, Hey, Andre, getting ready for night two. Last night was not as rough as I thought it was going to be. Okay, so... Um, for those of you who don't know, I believe that Carrie works in a hospital. And I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, Carrie is a, an ER nurse. And we were kind of in their ear last night, in her ear last night, as she's preparing to go for her shift. And it wasn't as rough as she thought. So that's hopeful. That's hopeful. That's exactly that's exactly why we gather. We know that this this live stream is not indicative of everything going on on the planet um this is just my small little you know corner of the world that i that we're all sharing in together um but it's very comforting to know that that last night she went in and it, it just it wasn't it wasn't as bad as she thought it was going to be that's very good very good news who else is on and where are you watching from 
I have my wine tonight in a. <laughs> oh man, it's it's my wine is in a mug. The mug says believe. Yes. What do we believe? We believe that we're going to be okay. We believe that we're going to be all right. And that there needs to be valleys in life. We don't like them, but that's like life is cyclical, right? Life kind of has the mountaintop experiences. Oh man, I feel great. I just got married. I just finished school. I just, you know, completed a marathon. I just completed a half marathon. I just met someone new. You know, all, all of these, all of these mountaintops. Uh, woo, hallelujah. I'm not sure if y'all can hear this music that I can hear, but <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, he's going in, y'all. We're just going to listen to this. Can y'all hear this? Can you hear this music? Or am I looking like I'm crazy? I hope to goodness that you all can hear this. If you can't hear this, if th if you can't hear this, I sound like the craziest person on the internet. If you can hear this, this is just fucking fantastic. If you can hear this, the message is everyone come together. In four minutes, I'm gonna have a special guest come on to talk with us. A very special guest. Now, be mindful that I would call all of you a special guest too. If you wanna be on later in the week or however long we're in coronavirus mode, just send me a text or drop me a line on the website, lovecityarts.org. It's scrolling down there, lovecityarts.org. This guy's singing his face off. I really hope that you all could hear that. I really do. Drop me a line at lovecityarts.org using the comment bar th at below if you want to come on and chat about your coronavirus experience. I believe that everyone has a special story to tell uh, in life, and I want to hear it. I want to hear it this week. We got nothing but time, and we got nothing but love, so <laughs> bring it out. Bring it out. If you want to text in, the phone number to text in is 404-585-1278. The text in number is 404-585-1278. Cammy says, Cammy says, Andre, I know you probably don't remember me, but I met you at CRMC when you worked there. You were always so happy and bright. Thank you, Cammy, for speaking out. Um, I wish I could see if I, oh, maybe I can go over here and see what you what you look like. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't put a wine mug on top of apple cider vinegar jar. That's not how that works. Um, thank you for calling me happy and bright. I'm not happy and bright all the time, but I do try to feel good and be happy. And, and because I believe that people that feel good and people that be happy. Hey, Pam, I love you. People that feel happy and feel good, um, no matter what. I know life gets rough out here and it's tough, but people that. Oh, you remember me and my bow ties? <laughs> Oh man, what a time. People that feel good and people that want to be happy somehow get that no matter what. It's a fucked up situation, guys. Sorry if your kids are in the room. It's a messed up situation. We don't know what's going to happen next year. And, see I didn't say but, and I'm going to choose to feel good. I'm going to choose to feel the best I can, that little ounce of feeling good. Oh, there it is. There it is. Hey, I hope that y'all can hear this music. Let me, actually, let me just confirm real quick that you all can hear this music, because if y'all can't hear this music, I look like a crazy... Hold on one second, let me do this. Okay. Woo! 
child. I'm so glad y'all could hear this music. If y'all couldn't hear that music going, I, ooh, child. Okay, let me see what Cammy looks like. Is it gonna let me do it? Oh man, Cam Cammy, I'm trying to see you. You look blonde, Cammy. Whatever you look right, Cammy, let's connect after this is over. Let's connect after this is over because I really want to dial in and bring in a really fantastic person. They're one of my local heroes. They're one of the first people that I met when I came to New York City. We could get into the story of how we met once, once I dialed them in. This is not a person... Well, you know what? You may have seen this person before, and we're going to talk about that. Oh my god, Cammy! of course I remember you from Occupational Health. I went over there for all my shots and all my inoculizations. I'm not supposed to be touching my face. Oh man, I don't have hand sanitizer tonight. I don't have hand sanitizer. All I have are Haribo. Can y'all see? Let's see if I can pull these into focus. Oh, okay, maybe that's it. Sorry about all the light. These are those Haribo sour strips and gummy bears. Oh my gosh, I need a bigger budget. You can't even see the gummy bears. Ha! Um, I have hairy boo, but I don't have hand sanitizer, so I gotta like, really keep my hands out of my, out of my face. This person you probably have seen if you've been watching TV. Maybe she'll talk about it tonight. Um, maybe she won't. Um, you know what? I'm gonna let her tell her own story. I told her that I would phone her, um, that I would phone my friend at 8.45 Eastern. And guess what? It's 8.45 Eastern. My name is Andre. I'm just a human being just like you. I live in New York City like millions of other people. I'm an artist like many other people. And I just have these weird itches of how I want to see the world come together through art and creativity and love. That's all. And I, I'm always trying to cook up ways and find people like you who are watching right now, still hanging on, who believe that we can really have a better world and a place that we that we imagine of love and positivity and light. So I'm just coming here every eight every night at 8:30 online. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Um, and we're just gonna show up. Oh, we're also live on LoveCityArts.org tonight. If that's working, I hope that's working. I just put, I just programmed that in this afternoon too. We're gonna gather every night at 8:30 to hold space for the world we want to inhabit, a world that holds less fear and more love. Less fear and more love. Say it with me now. Less fear, more love. Less fear, more love. Less fear, more love. Yes, Brian, we're coming on with the music. This music took me into this space where I just want to boldly say to you and all of your friends, less fear and more love. Let me get my friend on the line because I'm, I, I feel my help coming. But for real, guys, less fear, more love. It's, it's what we're going to need to get through this. Okay, I'm dialing a very special guest right now whose phone number, and I'm telling you, if you want to be a special guest, if you want to come on and like chat with me, it's so chill and laid back. I'm on a cloud and I'm drinking wine out of a mug. Ah! Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let me let me see her. I gotta get her number her number. I hope those are I hope her pronouns are actually her. We'll ask. We'll ask when we when she comes on. This is a person that's been on TV and everything. Sometimes she's humble, so all right, here's the number. Let's see. Let's see if this works tonight. Oh, oh, it's dialing. It's dialing. It's working. It's actually working tonight. Ah! No, is she? Hello. Is this who I think it is? Man, I wasn't. A, I was about to not answer. What is this oh, phone we, number? This is the Love City Arts number. The four zero four five eight five one two seven eight. As I drop that in front of everybody who's watching, that four zero four five eight five one two seven eight. Yes. Okay. I was just like, Georgia? On my mind. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I've been talking you up for the last 15 minutes at the top of the live. 
Please tell people proudly who you are. My name is Yolanda Fibonacci on social media. Y- uh, Yolanda Fibonacci on, on, on the social. I'm going to turn this music down a little bit that you probably can't hear because I haven't gotten that configured yet. I'm going to turn this down a little bit, if not off, so people can hear. Am I getting a little bit? Oh, yeah, I got a little bit there. Okay, thank you for bearing with me in my antics, Yolanda. Yolanda Fibonacci, um, tell the world a little bit about who you are as a human being. Well, um, okay, so uh, I am an, I'm an actor, I'm a writer, lots of creative, you know, things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I was in music a great deal. Uh, since I don't have my instruments now, I haven't done that in a while. Um, I yeah. move well. I'm not a dancer, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not a professional dancer, um, writer, playwright, poet. I did slam poetry for a while. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that for a second, because I told them that they may have seen you over the years of their lives. Where would they have seen you doing a little bit of slam poetry? Because, you know, your friends get to set you up so you can just knock it out. Okay, so that, this is the alley-oop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I was on Death Poetry Jam. Um, yes, yes, I was, yes. I was in Slam Nation 2. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and these things are streaming somewhere, right? Oh, yeah, you can watch them on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you yeah. can, yeah. Um, I did I did two seasons of Death Poetry Jam. Only one aired. Um, mm-hmm. But you can see the one that aired on, on YouTube. Oh, my God. And... Um, Let's see. I was on tour with the Morrigan. I keep talking. Uh, speak up. Speak up. Put bass in your voice when you say it. Where else will you go? On? I, I was on sixty minutes. Um, yes, yes, yes. Were you really on sixty minutes though? Yeah, I was. I was. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was, yeah. They were covering um, uh, the Slam uh, Nationals, and mm-hmm. so oh, wow. basically, um, that particular year, if I remember correctly. Like there were, there are, at this, at that point, there were three slam venues and in each venue had a slam team mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, uh, all three of us, all three New York teams made it into the finals. Nice. So, you know, people, people knew like New York had the slam poets and, but then again, so did California and Texas and, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow, 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 awesome. wow, wow. I mean, okay, how is the slam poetry, I mean, not this not this week, but is the slam poetry scene in, in New York still, like, a thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's the Bowie Poetry Club, there's the New Yorican, mm-hmm. um, I think Bar 13 is still doing their thing. Yeah, there's still, there's still slam poetry going on. And uh, there's still nationals going on. I haven't, uh, I haven't had uh, the chance to go because, you know, I've been doing other stuff. Yeah, yeah, other um, things creatively. Mm-hmm. Yes. Awesome. Yes, but awesome. It, yeah, it goes on. It, it opened. It opened up a lot of doors for me. It opened the door for me to be able to do my first one woman uh, show that I was able to go on tour with. I was out in Los Angeles at the women's theater festival with that. I was able to go to the Aspen comedy festival mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah, you, I mean, you've been out here able- creating, I mean, that's what I, that's one thing that I admire about you is that you just keep going and going and going. Like every time I look on the internet, I see you in, you know, this project or another project. I mean, you just yeah i was in a project but because of uh coronavirus it got canceled. <laughs> just like everybody else i mean that was a you know friday the 13th was a friday the 13th it, it wasn't really it? came out of <laughs> left like really came out of left field like really hard like, I, mean, I was just like my god it was gray it was drizzling right my the play i was in got canceled all of my how did you I hear about that and i'm not trying to take all, you through all i am too i'm saying all of my friends i'm talking about yeah. friends who were on tour friends who were uh 
on set for either a TV show or film, friends on Broadway, friends yeah. off Broadway, everybody got canceled at the exact at the same time imagine everybody i mean not imagine it's what we're living like i almost said it like it was a hypothetical thing like imagine walking into a a job walking into your workplace and everybody in it you think that you have to worry about whether you're going to keep your job no everybody in that motherfucker is done like you you these are things you only imagine but then in one moment on on al gore's internet we literally (laughs) just (laughs) Yeah, he probably just like got a chill when you said that. He's probably <laughs> sitting in Tennessee, like whoa, whoa. with his whis- with his whiskey in his hand, going, oh, did you "Feel that?" And his wife <laughs> and his wife said- and his wife wakes up from the TV that she's been dro- dro- uh, <laughs> drooling on and goes, "Oh, I did, I did a little bit." Somebody said your name. <laughs> and so everybody. Fun, not funny is that everybody found out about this and I watched as well as my feed started filling with oh well like like sometimes it, sometimes the status was actually oh oh well and and we all collectively knew what that was right right it happened to me four times <laughs> I was just like wow this is I, I was just it was like being on a uh, a stool and and you know like one leg gets kicked out and you're like okay well I'm still sitting I got three more legs Ugh. and then the other one came up and I was like okay so if I just like you know tense up my my thigh muscles I can still balance I still got two legs on this stool right, right. and then then the other uh, stool leg got kicked up kicked out and I was like well might as well stand up because this isn't working yeah and then the other one got kicked out and i was like okay so this is a thing this is a thing something that i would have never expected to happen happened that the whole world is still the whole world is has slowed down Mm -hmm. i mean uh we all have that in common we are all like sitting in a place and not going out rushing around going to work doing all of these other things it, it, we're being made to sit still and i'm like if you're going to sit still might as well think about what you're going to do with that time what, what are since you, we're all what, sitting still yeah i mean we're we're contemplative as fuck right now right <laughs> like like we are yes <laughs> we're we are we are at rest um sometimes like government governmentally that's not even fucking word but like uh we the government is now they say in new york potentially in the next 48 hours imposing rest like upon us in various ways like this is Mm -hmm. like you're going to take rest because there's nowhere for you to go right Exactly. Uh, and so you were talking about like you had to you come to a contemplative place about what you want to do. Um, what have, what have you what have you decided to do? How how do you use this? Well, one one thing when it when it all started, one thing I noticed is like uh, the first two days I did a, a lot of sleeping, and I just took that as you've been tired because you know. Uh, Even emotionally, was, right? Oh, I mean, well, when when something when something like this happens, worry uh, drains you. Worry and anxiety drains you. You could have been sitting on the couch or laying in bed all day, but if you were sitting on the couch or laying in bed worrying the entire time, it, it would feel like you had run a marathon. Right. But not have, but not have any of the good side effects. Not have any of the, you know, the benefit. Raise serotonin. Yeah, none, none of the raised serotonin levels. You just right. everything depletes you, and so your mind. You really, really have to take control of your mind, and 
goodness knows with the news and with everything that's going on, you could easily spiral down into something that you can't get out of that. And, and also that kind of stuff uh, attacks your immune system. So we have to be very, very vigilant on not just taking care of our bodies, but how we think. So yeah, and that's yeah. what I, I want to, I want to pivot that to the people who are watching as well. Like what, like, what are you, what are you doing with this time? Like, how are you using this time? Like, how are you staying vigilant? What is, what does vigilance look like for those of you who are watching and for you, Yolanda? Well, I mean, when I start having these, like, I have a very, very wild imagination. Oh, yeah. That's what and, makes you a great you know, actress. I've seen you on stage. <laughs> like, that's what makes you, you a great actress. I, 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 one, one second. I'm going like, to pin your vivid imagination. Those of you who are watching, um, we are live now on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Um, there may be some stream. Oh, and streaming's going on on lovecityarts.org as well. If you're into this conversation, also the alarm going off on my wrist, um, then please share this right now out to your networks. We, we're trying to just come together and have our little pocket of love in the midst of the storm. Um, Yolanda, keep going. Yeah, um, I have a very wild imagination. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak about like little thoughts that have come into my head because I don't want to speak anything into existence because this is going to sound really like woo woo uh new agey kind of you're thing. in the right spot but I, for woo woo I've got I've got woo woo and some haribo gummy bears over here so you just do what you need to do I really think that we need to watch the things that we say okay I I I am all about dealing with reality if you are stating a fact Mm -hmm. that exists and has been proven that's one thing yeah but don't start saying oh this happened so that means this is going to happen and that's going to happen and this is going to happen don't do that don't do that mm -hmm. we things are manifesting like really really quickly and yeah. um you tra you're talking so basically about like science of thought or like like mind like like you're you're the the things you say, like becoming manifest. Well, yeah, it, it, that happens anyway. I mean, that's what language is. There's this mm. guy from Switzerland way back in the day who basically studied language. I can't remember his name, but he explained it as though like language takes things that we all perceive and puts it in a way that we all can understand it and in, yeah. in that way you are literally creating your reality with what it is that you say or you're solidifying okay wait, 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 your wait, wait, reality wait, wait, okay wait 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 i told you that i was on a cloud because i believe in integrity okay and so i'm hearing you say to me that of course like i never thought about it until this moment we have these images in our mind space mm -hmm. and the only way for me to transfer to you what i'm thinking about right now like there's a word in my in my room on a on a dry erase board mm -hmm. the oh and it's in my head the only way for me to command it to you and to affect your world of what you're of, of my experience is for me to use the gift of language to say that i'm looking at the word love in blue mm -hmm. and just like that you got it exactly but the but the pipe through which the whole thought flow flow flowed was the language exactly and so to your point keep going we got to be mindful of that pipeline because it actually makes things real right right I, there, it, Use the pragmatism that you have, like, you know, you, there there has to be balance in this. You don't want to be somebody who's like totally um, pessimistic and, you know, pessimism doesn't mean that you're a realist and it doesn't mean that you're smarter and it doesn't mean that you're more mature than anybody. It just means you're a pessimist. And in some instances, you use pessimism to keep you from having to do anything. So 
you don't have to take any action. Yeah, you don't have to already, believe anything. Ooh, yeah, it's already shitty, so I, why even bother? Right, and that, and we don't have time for that right now. We really don't. If you want to talk about how contagious this virus is, pessimism in this, in what we are living in today, could be just as deadly, because because you turned your back uh, to to uh, to a concern of the community. Exactly. You're like, well, fuck it. We're all going to die. So I'm going to go out here and sneeze on everybody I can see. Right. Or... I chew. I chew. I chew. Meanwhile, <laughs> or... me, me, meanwhile you, you have the power of life and death in your actual hands. And in your words. And in power and death. Uh, yeah, uh, life and death. Tongue. Life and death. Exactly. Oh, see how they knew gosh. stuff back then? There's this there's this thing that uh, have you ever heard of muscle checking? No, tell me about it. Okay, so muscle checking is this thing where so your your heart uh, there you you get an AEKG on your heart yeah. and it, it measures the the electricity so you have this electromagnetic field that is emitted that's around your heart that's emitted from your heart yeah and when people don't feel well that field isn't that strong it shrinks and this is science you feel better well yeah i mean yeah. it's it's science explains it much much better no you're doing a than, great job though like but like there they we have documented that there are electromagnetic feel around your body because we can do this with machines and we can do this with magnets and things high-tech equipment it is keep going right so there is this thing when i work with kids and um and i'm trying to show them how powerful their words are mm -hmm. i do a muscle check with them. And so what I do is that I'll usually get like, they love candy. So I get the, or they are drinking some horrible soda that has like 70 grams of sugar mm -hmm. in like two servings and whatever it is that they're drinking. And I'll say to them, okay, take that bottle or that bag of candy and put it, well, first off, feel where your heartbeat is in your chest and then put that bottle or bag of candy or whatever, right there by your heart. And whichever arm is uh, your dominant uh, hand, stick that out to the side. And I'm going to take two fingers and I'm going to try to lower your arm. But I want you to put your arm out to the side and, and tighten up your muscles and just do everything you can to keep me from lowering your arm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they do that. And with just two fingers, I, you know, press on their arm and their arm goes down. And they look at, it always happens. They look at me with these big eyes like, what in the world? I was really like strong there and you just put my arm down and then I'll give them. Yeah, I'm, be, thinking, I'm thinking I, that the arm would stay up. No, no. So then I switch out whatever the candy or the sugary drink is and I'll either give them water or a piece of fruit or whatever. And I'll tell them, put this by your heart this time. Stick your arm out like you did before. I'm gonna use the same two fingers. Tell me when you're ready. I'm gonna to try to push your arm down. And it's harder for me to push their arm down. And they, again, the big eyes like, miss, what is this? What, what are you is, doing? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, what is it? I was like, I'm gonna show you one thing better. And so I tell them, you know, put down the fruit, put down the water. And, and I say to them, I was like, so what I'm about to tell you, I don't mean, I don't mean anything that I'm about to say to you, but put your arm back up. And then I stand beside them once they put their arm up. And I'm like, you are the stupidest student I have ever ever seen the, the the kids out in the classroom are like laughing there as like, you are an idiot you can't do anything right uh i don't trust you and their arm goes down immediately i barely have to push on it wow and then i'm like i was like okay you knew i didn't mean any of that right and you're he, like right okay so let's shake that out and i'm like put your arm back up 
And I was like, you ready? They're like, yeah, you are the smartest person I have ever seen. Mm. I, I enjoy being in your company because I know you're going to say something smart. Yes. I know you're going to be amazing. You're beautiful. You're strong. You're wise. And they, the, then they start grinning, boys and girls. You know, yeah. they start grinning and everything. And their arm, I can't put their arm down at all. And then I say to them, I was like, when did you feel stronger? And they're like, when you're saying nice things, when I had the water, when I had the fruit. And I was like, when did you feel weaker? And they're like, when I had the candy, when I had the sugar, when you were saying mean things. And I was like, you mean to tell me you felt weak, even though you knew I didn't mean what I was saying to you? And they're like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was wow. like, and I was just like, because they're, we're cells. We're cells. We are a collection. Our bodies are a collection of cells. Our yeah. brains are a collection of cells. It doesn't matter that your part of your brain understands that I'm telling you that I don't mean it. More of your brain believed what I said, and definitely all of your heart did. And, and it affected so, your whole physiology. Exactly. And I was like, well, how did you feel when I said those things to you? And they're like, even though they knew I didn't mean it, I could see them like sinking into themselves and feeling like absolute crap. And just like conversely, when I started saying all of the positive things, it was amazing. It was like watching a plant grow mm -hmm. in front of me in a sped up time. Yeah, and, Karen Crawford and, out yeah. in uh, Tennessee said, flower in the concrete. We were talking about that earlier, and now it's coming back up again as another theme. Like, you could see them, like, come on through, pop on through, like, you know, perk up. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so the same thing. The same thing yeah, applies. So the same thing applies now to what we, how we're speaking about COVID-19 and our relationship to COVID-19. I hear you saying that it's very important right now that we – mind our language and speak up to ourselves in this moment right I, we have to speak we have to speak up to ourselves and i'm not saying that I, i'm not saying like we need to affect the dunning dunning kruger effect where just because i say i'm smart i'm going to be a doctor without having to go to school or without having to study or without right. having to do residency no that's not how this works yeah, yeah, yeah but you do have to be mindful if we're going to be still rather than having and i'm saying this to myself i'm not mm -hmm. preaching out to people this is reminding myself if we're going to be sitting still rather than you know getting dragged down by all the news of the day, you know, you, you can get it. You <laughs> they're sending text messages now. So if you really need to know something, it's going to get to you. Yeah. Take this time to think about what it is you want to have happen. Not and, and do it, you know, telescope it out. Like yeah. start, wow. start with yourself. Like, yeah. what do I want in my life? And then go out. What do I want in this apartment? What do I want in this building? What do I want on this city block? What do I want in my neighborhood? What do I want in my city? What do I want in my, in my state, in my country, uh, in this hemisphere, in the world? And just do it in little pieces like that. And it's not going to be so overwhelming. And it doesn't seem as though it's impossible because maybe all you started with was uh, I'm going to go to bed earlier or when I get up in the morning, I'm going to meditate or I'm going to drink a full glass of water or I'm going to take a walk or, you know, something small. Yeah. Or, or just like, I'm not going to say as many negative things about myself. I'm not going to judge myself. I'm not going to be mean to myself. Yeah. Write it down. Write it down. Like if you want to make a list, write it. And then, and because, because we're in such stillness right now, this is actually the best time for those type of habits that we do want to take root. 
because there's no distractions and extra stuff. We actually we could essentially reinvent our entire lives right now. Absolutely. Because we've got what, what, what did they you can you can start a new habit or break a bad habit in 21 days. We're going to have that. And if and if and if the whole world is going to have this slowdown period and if all of us, what if all of us, it ain't going to be all of us, but just let yourself think. Okay. What if all of us in the United States, in Austria, in Australia, in all of Europe, in Asia, uh, in all of the various places on the earth where this is uh, taking effect, if we took this time to truly envision a society that we want to live in, a society that is healthy, egalitarian, that is progressive, that is, I mean, because what, what is happening, most people don't want. Right. And, and, and I think it just got out of our control because all of us were so busy. You can't do these big time thoughts and everything when you when you're in yourself, have yeah. to be at work. Right. If you have to be at work, right. then you have to be at your second job. Then you have to go to rehearsal or you have to take care of the kids. You don't have time for all of these deep thoughts and everything. When you're like, man, I'm trying, I, I, I'm so wound up when I get in the bed, finally, I'm too wound up to sleep. So I get what, four hours of sleep. And then I have to get up and go do it all again. And I'm like pouring coffee down my throat to just be able to focus on the day. Right. Then I have all these other things to do. So now we have the stillness. So let's do something. And if you don't have an idea of what you could aim for, there are books out there. There have been people who have been writing books on this for hundreds of years and just men and women. That what would they Google? Have, what would they Google if they needed to Google it? What would they? The, I, well, I, what, one of one of my favorites mm -hmm. is uh, Utopia for Realists by Rudger Bregman. Oh, I gotta pick up my phone now. Hold on. Yeah, because I look, I'm here to benefit from these conversations just as much as everybody else. The truth be told. So once I, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, the, there's also a book written like a few hundred years ago called How to Live, um, A Life of Montaigne by to How to Live. Right. He just wrote like, fuck it. I'm okay. going to tell book. This is how you live a life. So How, how to Live is, is the book. And then what was the one that you said right before that? Utopia for Realists. Utopia for realist okay because what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hit you up after this and get like links and then drop them for people because this is like good shit yeah <laughs> like no like it is it is like this is how this is how we grow like by being in the right place at the right time and being like oh 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 how to live how to live and then utopia for realists like and then you never know like this is this is exactly how not uh, please keep your utopia for real like thought um this is how you can heal your life by louise hay came into my life because I just so happened to be going through Baton Rouge with my best friend from college. We stopped to stay overnight just as a kindness with with his friend Heather. She said, I only need two things in my life to keep me safe. You can heal your life by Louise Hay and this Glock sitting on my <laughs> on my living room table. <laughs> I said, Holy shit, like you the Glock to keep you physically safe, and then Louise Hay's book Louis Hay's book to keep you um, to keep your mind safe, I said, well, I'll be damned. I guess I'm picking up that book as soon as I get home. And that book single-handedly changed my heart and the pathway of my life. Um, this is how it happens. Absolutely. This is how it Absolutely. happens. Book, okay. Yeah. So tell me about, tell me about, uh, how to live. Well, how to live is, um, written, it's, it's called a life of Montaigne and here I'll just um, in one question and in 20 attempts and answer uh, this is what it says on the back 
Such questions arise in most people's lives. They are all versions of the bigger conundrum. How do you live? The subject obsessed Renaissance writers, none more than Michel de Montaigne. He has a middle name that I absolutely cannot pronounce, so I'm not even going to try it. Yes. He considered to be the first truly modern individual. He wrote free roaming explanations, explorations of his thoughts and experience. Unlike anything written before on subjects ranging from proper conversation and good reading to the endurance of pain, more than 400 years later, Montaigne's honesty and charm still draw readers to him in search of companionship, wisdom, entertainment, and in search of themselves. So my thing is with this particular book, if you are reading it and you see something that you don't agree with, Put in what it is you want, and you, you create your, your book on how to live. The thing is, is that if you are making a conscious effort on making an improvement, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then you reading and writing it down, I'm not saying that you're going to change overnight. But then again, with what's going on right now, we could change overnight. We don't have anything else going on. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's, it's, and some, to your earlier point, some people would say we're just one thought away from radical transformation. Like it just, boom, the lights came on. That's, that's true. You know, that's true. If we, if I we, mean, if we didn't believe the, if we, cause so I'm about to get woo woo and, and probably lose all of our watchers by saying that some people said that that's the only difference between us and the biblical Jesus is the fact that he didn't have anything standing in the way of his belief. He just, he just, he told the lady, if you, if you, if you read the damn, you know, fairy tale slash book, <laughs> if you read it, he told the lady, because of your belief, you are made whole. She's like, Jesus, oh, yeah. she said, like, Jesus, 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 heal me, heal me, heal me. I need to be healed, you know, from both mental anguish to physical anguish. He said, okay, you're healed. She, and she goes, oh, I'm healed. Yeah. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, your, your faith, your, your, your thought, which I hear is your thought, your belief in, because faith is the belief in something. So your belief made you well. There you go. Have a good life, lady. I feel like I feel like that that's the embodiment of Jesus, and Jesus just uh, just assumed that that was how life is. Oh yeah, of course you you have a issue of blood, and you touched me, and and now you're well. No, yeah, that's 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 what you're supposed to do, and then and then, but we we're just like that, but we have all of this stuff that's like handed to us, probably somewhere around like one and two to three years old, where. You know, we stop giggling as much. I just met my nephew this week, um, 10 month year old nephew through the internet. And like, literally, he's just happy for no damn reason, Yolanda. Like, what's he- wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> this, does he know there's a pandemic going on? Does he, does he know that literally we got <laughs> coronavirus? <laughs> this, this little guy. Con- the hell you laughing at? <laughs> Why would you suck on that bottle? We got coronavirus. You know, like literally, like he is just so oblivious. And I believe that he would believe that in an instant he could be well and whole. Why not? You know, why not? But we acquire all of this extra stuff. And then that stuff, you know, y'all don't take this too far you know like i'm still going to take my damn medicine you know i'm gonna take my antihistamines and my blood pressure medicine when i go to bed i'm not pretending like i'm gonna think my although i could think my blood pressure down but i'm also gonna pretend like i didn't i'm not gonna pretend like i didn't eat that pork for dinner (laughs) you ate you're still eating pigs i know i know i know i know i'm teasing I, I, I know teasing. you're I know you're teasing, but also there's a lot although, of people who are although watching. Although Trump Trump did cut back on pork inspectors, so maybe you shouldn't. It's, I know eat it's dangerous. And I, right and I've now. seen the sci- I've seen the science and what it looks like under a microscope and all that, and I'm I just it just hit so well. And but now I gotta like encounter the reasons why I need my medication. So you know maybe if the pork went away, then the medication would go away, and then I could really be in a place right now of saying that. Yeah, I can think myself out of high blood pressure, you know? Um, anyway, this is a tangent that I just took you yes. on. Um, That's but, cool. But I'm, with, but I'm with you that what we're thinking and what we're saying and what we believe 
about ourselves matters. Yeah. Carrie says, headed to the ED now. Big thanks to Andre for having Yolanda on. It's the best decision I made all week. Second to the decision that I made to have Davi on last night. All love. <laughs> I, I'm just That's my interjection. And Yolanda for giving me something to really think about as I encounter and lead the shift tonight. So Carrie, um, for those of you watching and for Yolanda, um, Carrie is an ER nurse. Oh, God bless you. Thank you for all that you are doing. Yeah. And we thank you for your service. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really frontline stuff. Like, you know, I mean, like, <laughs> I can say this to you, Yolanda. Big, that's big dick energy. Big dick energy oh. is walking into an ER knowing that there's a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And being like, just hand me my gloves and my, and my stethoscope. I can't say that right now. Just hand me my tools and, and like, like just, just hand me my beer. I'm sure she's not getting the beer, but she's leading the shift for crying out loud. But, mm -hmm. you know, she's right there knowing that someone could come in that would infect her in a second and still runs towards. We need to be really blasting those people with all of the love, light, and positivity. You know what? Matter, matter of fact, right now, I'm just going to hold in my heart. There's people watching right now on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and 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 other places on uh, lovecityarts.org. I want to hold space with you, Yolanda, if that's okay. Of for, course. For all of the first responders. First responders, healthcare workers. Yes, absolutely. You know, the people that, I mean, it's bringing like light tears to my eyes because like, I I don't, that that's a, that's a unique form of courage. Like that, that is a very unique, I'm going to say it again because at, because that's the only thing coming up for me. Like it's a very unique form of courage to be able to just go in there and just know that like, I mean, this is outside of coronavirus. It takes coronavirus and the media blowing this shit to the moon in order for us to really, pre they were always subjecting themselves to deadly things. They, Absolutely. They were subjected. They were subject. Car Carrie was going into the ER and subjecting herself to pathogens and things in two th in 2016. <laughs> you know, this didn't just happen day before yesterday. And so, I just want to offer up. She says, "Love y'all." In the end of her message, as she's going into an ER to treat people with coronavirus. <laughs> Love you back. Love you back. Right. <laughs> you know. Love you back. Thank you for loving us. Love you back. And I and I hope because I believe in angels and because I believe mm -hmm. in the divine, I hope that every time the divine tells her to put on a mask, she she listens. I hope that every time that the divine tells her to put to put on hand sanitizer, that she listens. I hope that she always is mindful of how close she is and how far she needs to be and that she has her wits about her. So that she can navigate this and get back home to her family as well. I hope that uh, her white blood cells can kill off anything before it takes root yep. in her. Yep. And, that, and, and the same is for all of the healthcare workers all over the world. I'm not saying that they should not use their uh, PPE and yep. use hand sanitizer and everything like that. This is not magical thinking. This is just making it even better with all of the pragmatic things that they will be doing to take care of themselves yep. in the natural. So, yeah, we don't have time for doctors and nurses and medics and EMTs and all these people getting sick. We don't have time for that. That is not an option. We can't allow that to happen. If that has been something that came into your mind, like, oh, my God, all these doctors are going to be sick. And then we no cancel that because that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. That hasn't that hasn't happened. So let's do everything we can to make sure it doesn't happen in the natural. Let's do all the pragmatic things that we need to do to make sure that doesn't happen in the natural. And let's not talk about let's not speak anything that we don't want into existence. We are going to get through this miraculously and they're going to be telling saying 10 years from now, a oh, man, I don't know how we did that but we without did all of these people getting sick. I don't, that is amazing. It shouldn't have worked. Like just like a bumblebee's not supposed to fly. I don't know how we got out of that. Woo! <laughs> Say that. 
say that. I, I didn't even <laughs> look. I didn't even know until right now. You tell me a bumblebee is not supposed to be able to fly. Well, they say the way a bumblebee is designed, with the the kind of wings and the way its body is shaped, it shouldn't like. It should... Scientists have said that should not be able to fly like that. I did not know that. that and here's that, another that, thing. Probably... Here's another thing. <laughs> okay, w- yeah. When, when, you know about locusts, like when swarms of locusts come in and everything. Yeah, yeah, did yeah. you know locusts? Locusts can't fly. They can't fly. What they do is jump together and catch a wind current and let the wind current blow them where they're supposed okay, to go. Okay, you know what you know what I'm going to do and I hope I hope viewers stay if you want to, don't say if you don't want to. I'm going to go I want to turn up this music a little bit. I'm going to go refill my wine because you just cracked my brain. One second. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, I don't care. This is my live. This ain't fucking Bravo Network or BET. How many? Have, tell this. Tell the two people who are with us. I have no idea. I'm playing. I don't know how many people are watching. <laughs> no, look, I don't know. If they, people saw. There are literally six people watching right now. Y'all stay or go. The Lord is still on the throne. I'm gonna refill my wine because Yolanda just told me that <laughs> lo- wait, I'll, I'll be right back it'll be 30 seconds i promise and, ne- and tomorrow night i'm gonna bring the wine in with me hold on hold on just, just hold on <laughs> hey six people um while he's gone if you could just type in i can't see anything because i'm just on the phone um what is it that you're doing right now he's getting wine i'm talking to you on the phone what are you doing where are you in the world like any new yorkers like anybody anybody in new york city that we're about to get this uh stay in place kind of thing i don't know what that means i don't know if that means we're not allowed to go out of the house or or what but is he back yet nobody i can't hear anybody okay i'm hearing stuff yeah, you're hearing you're hearing me on live. Did it? Did anybody type in what they're doing? Like, could they hear me while you were gone? The reason why I was gone is because I had a full on like spill. Hold on. I think I contain the spill. Are you there, Yolanda? I'm just listening. I just had I just had to have I had to have this wine, and this is what I get because now there is a tsunami on my floor, and th- and that's okay too because what kind of wine are you drinking? Um, I'm having the <laughs> I can I can actually show the people that are watching. I'm having this lovely box of Franzia Chardonnay. I'm having that. Um, and You're a soccer mom. I, I'm a full... And more... You you saw the pork roast. I'm totally... <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, someone... People were commenting in. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Suzanne Ducharme said it has happened. I think they were talking back about um, this pandemic that's happening and everything we're talking about with the doctors. Um, mm-hmm. Danbury Hospital has 200 nurses sitting on the sidelines who've been exposed, but may be fine, but there are no tests. Are you kidding me? She, she's in Rockland County in the house, Suzanne Descharm. She's saying that at Danbury Hospital. I know. Su- hey, Suzanne, what's going on? Oh my gosh, yes, yes. She's been hanging on while I spilled things and everything. Um, yeah, she said there's 200 nurses sitting on the sidelines who've been exposed but maybe fine. There's, but there are no tests. Isn't that scary? They need to be out. Oh my goodness, we really fumbled this, Yolanda. We didn't. Trump did. I know you don't want to get political, but no, no this, I, I don't mind. The, the, on, the, the personal. This political. rests squarely on two two men, two egotistical men who are uh, egotists, and they didn't do what they were supposed to do because they didn't want to look bad. And that's President Xi in China, when a doctor contacted him before this even got to pandemic levels, he told him to shut up and don't say anything. And 
things got worse. Suzanne said, hey, girl. And, go on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, so now it's um, uh, Trump. I mean, he was told about this in January. In January. And in 2008, right. And in 2018, he basically disbanded all the people who would be the people working on this. The I mean, experts. He told the experts to go home. We don't need you here no more. Right, right. So that's that's what this is. And and people ought not forget about that. I'm not Again, gonna for, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna forget it. I'm convinced and we, we can talk about whatever we want to talk about because we over here in on my lawn and I'm glad people are watching on my lawn. <laughs> but let me tell you something. I hope I'm not gonna forget it. And I hope that other people don't forget it either because he, he if he is reelected in these conditions, I would say that I don't know what to say, but I would I, that would solidify like the hatred, the known hatred in the world to me. There's so no way we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't so, want that. We don't want that. So cancel, cancel, cancel. Not gonna, not gonna. We, we, we need to do everything that needs to be done to make sure that doesn't happen. Right. I'm um, not. I'm not powerless to this. No, you. No, you're not. I mean, remember, locusts don't have wings. They oh, yeah, can't that's fly. What, that's okay. Just, that's just one, to... just one little locust jumps up and catches a wind current and a bunch of other ones do the same it's just and they become a swarm so you're just one locust little locust with very fly. you just jump up with your your strong legs if each of us do what we're supposed to do individually we will be a swarm and if if we're all thinking about like what kind of society we want what kind of community we want to live in what kind of world we want to live in and be realistic about that. Yeah. We can, we can make some changes. I mean, come on. There, there have been many advances that humankind has made just from changing their thinking. There's no reason why that can't happen now. Yolanda, this, this feels like a clarion call. Like, I mean, (laughs) it it, it really, (laughs) You know, like, like it, it feels, it feels like, like I, I hear it very clearly, and I think everyone watching, and and there's like hundreds of people that watch the replays. Um, it's like, oh, good, yeah, and it's, it's just like, I hear the call in my heart, like, I, like the, like I, I'm gonna be laying down, and the last thing I'm gonna say, I promise you this, the last thing I'm gonna say before I lay down to rest tonight is gonna be locusts really can't fly. No, um, they jump and, and they jump and like where is that jump in me i think it's what i'm doing right now is part of my jump but i want to go deeper and like actually um think about what my jump is and what it looks like to strategically partner with people like yourself one thing i have seen is the way that people have been coming on to live streaming and um, zoom meetings and online dinner parties and drove uh, droves i think that um you know i hate to say it this way and please take my energy for the way it is um i just say what i feel um thank you coronavirus um in in buddhism in um, and I'm sorry for all the people who who died and, and, and who are suffering right now. But in Buddhism, we call everything a guru, even your ex-husband, even your ex-wife, even my ex-lovers. Thank you, ex-lover guru. Thank you for teaching me something. Thank you for opening my mind. Thank you. Thank you, flu guru, for sitting me down. You see where I'm going with this? Like, thank you, coronavirus. I know that this is not good. I know that this is not a great thing. I know that this is causing so much suffering. And I offer nothing but light and high vibration to the healing of our world. That being said, thank you, coronavirus, for opening up another channel in us where we can see the, the the capability of technology. Listen, I wasn't even looking for how to put someone on a phone call on the World Wide Web through live stream three weeks ago. That was not in my consciousness, Yolanda. And I've been live streaming for a minute, but I was like, I never tried. 
I never tried hard enough because, hey, everything's just going fine and I'll do as I do it. The coronavirus created this urgency in my heart so that I could research into the middle of the night the technology and, and patch my computer in such ways so that the output – because the first night that I tried this, the first night that I tried this, Stacia tried to jump on an, uh, another light in my life, and it didn't work. Like, people were hearing me, but they weren't hearing them, so we just abandoned. But but something about the coronavirus and how it's implanting fear in the hearts of people made me go, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to give up on allowing us lights to connect. I'm going to take my, my locust jump. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna take I'm gonna take my locust jump and just keep jumping. I'm like, no audio, all right. I'll jump tomorrow. No sound, I'll jump tomorrow. Oh, no one's watching, I'll jump tomorrow. And I'm I'm gonna keep jumping, Yolanda, with you. And I'm gonna keep calling you back. Um, you don't have to you don't have to like reserve eight thirty every night um through the coronavirus um thing, but like I'm gonna keep calling you back too. Let's keep jumping. You know, I I, I far fetched. And I'm gonna let you riff about this, you know, universal basic income. Hey, something that that a bunch of people who consider themselves to be moderate, conservative, oh, that's ridiculous! You can't do that. All of a sudden, um, we're going to have to issue thousand uh, yeah. dollar checks. I mean, all of a sudden, it's like, yo, we had to do this, or the we economy had, is had, going to like could have done it all along. I mean, it's just like nobody's buying this now. Like this is, I'm not going to, I'm not saying that what you said was wrong, but my, myself personally, I'm not going to thank coronavirus. I'm going to take this opportunity that in our stillness, not only are we going to be reflective but, and be con contemplative, mm -hmm. but we notice things. You're going to tell me that when somebody says we want to have universal health care, we can't afford it, but without any kind of like checking in with the Congress, the Congress or anybody else, that $1.2 trillion was poured into the stock market and just like a snap of the fingers. I mean, they didn't, they didn't what, waste any time to do that, right? <laughs> and, 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 then, and then it only the bump in the stock market only lasted for an hour. And then a few days later, it 3000 points were lost. So is that money that we so, lost? That's money just down the drain. Well, okay. So money is like energy. Money is energy. Yeah, it cannot fiat, be fiat, destroyed. Fiat. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what it is, is that it was just moved. So some, a bunch of people got it. And also to go even further, you know, that big tax cut of about a trillion dollars, mm -hmm. that was supposed to bolster the economy to the point that what we're experiencing right now shouldn't be happening. But no, what people did with that, they didn't do anything to like strengthen the economy. They pocketed it. They hid it. It's you know, yeah, it's, in offshore accounts yeah. all over the world. Exactly. So, Some Swiss. So the thing, mm -hmm. the thing is, is that you cannot have a healthy. So if you are going to have an economy that works the way ours does, that you need to have money flowing and it has to flow for it to be really healthy. It has to flow through all sectors. It can't just be flowing at the top and nothing flowing in the middle or in the toward the bottom right it has to be flowing everywhere and so i'm sure at this time when everybody when most people are sitting still and like yo i'm i'm just in the house and i'm watching tv i'm on social media and i and they're getting all of this information it's making them think it's like wait a minute so last month just a few weeks ago we were told we couldn't that universal basic income was in, was impossible and yeah, it just couldn't uh, be done. And, Andrew Yang <laughs> stood up on many stages and talked about it very clearly, <laughs> very clearly. And and now and now they're like you know New York is talking about it. They're the uh, borough president of Queens. Thank you, Kathleen Warnock, for letting me know about this. Yes, yes, the yes. Bur uh, the the borough president of Queens is just he wants to call it the people's paycheck. 
he's like, okay, so what? We don't care if the rest of the country isn't going to do it. New York needs to do this. It's the right thing. If you are if you are New York City, it, it has to be done. No, people aren't working, and they're shutting down more things. If they just told, they they just told restaurants. You can't have customers come in and sit down and eat. So that means wait staff, bussers, hostess, hosts, they are they're out of work just like I am. Yeah, send all your you know? people. Yeah, I mean, this is a game changer. This is a game changer. Me and my friends behind the scenes and you're one of my dearest friends as well. Like I can like I when I I think I that like what feeling is mutual. I think I, I mean legitimately I don't see you every day because that's how New York is set up and it's been crazy pre coronavirus. And so like literally I see you probably like once or twice a year yet I like your post and resonate with your energy every motherfucking day. And so I don't know why I was going off in this way loving on you because I'm on a cloud but Keep going. I, we, we, it's 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 going to happen. They're suspending, like, evictions because you can't. People aren't working, so you you can't have expect them to be able to pay rent when there's no if, when their income has been suspended. So you're not going to start another problem with homelessness if everybody's supposed to stay in the house. Why are you, there's no way in the world you're going to evict somebody out on the street. And Suzanne, don't even get me Suzanne into. Suzanne says over here on this side of the Hudson, I, I assume that over here on this side of the Hudson is New Jersey. Either uh, entire shopping centers are being shut down. That means all of the kids in, in Gap, all of the kids in, you know, all of the people in the, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what a shopping center has. I mean, well, I mean, well, this, let's say like, what, I'm just going to go by what they're doing in San Francisco. Speak that. And San Francisco and San Francisco has decided that grocery stores can be open, uh, drug stores can be open, gas stations can be open. So anything that is non-essential, and that's going to be clothing stores. That's going to be. I feel badly. You know, Elon, restaurants. Not- all I do is interject, and I'm sorry. Um, but I no, feel, no, this is I, what I, we're doing. I this feel I, I feel badly for. Okay, so I. <coughs> sorry. Are you coughing? Are you coughing? Coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> could you imagine? This is not a funny matter, but let me tell you something. Could you imagine uh, if I just choked out right here live? I, I, I'm the type no, of person. That um that like builds relationships ever even if they're like medium but not super deep relationships with my cashiers like I know every cashier in my neighborhood like they know me they ask me about shows I'm in they ask me how my voice is doing when I look sad they pick up on that and they're like oh are you you're not having a good day are you gonna be okay like we like like me like. And all there's like eight of them between the two grocery stores. All of them are my homies. Like they know what color my nails are. They know who I'm dating. Like these people are my friends um, because they're humans, right? And so I literally came down the street with my humidify my humidifier, which is a little late in the season for a humidifier, but I'm not fucking around with coronavirus. So I literally came down the street and I stopped in the grocery store, Yolanda. They look sad. Of course. They're being subjected to everybody's funk. Oh, my God. Like, I mean, it's literally like, like, and like lines all the way winding through the store, you know, um, yesterday. And I I just, I came in, you know, because, you know, it's it's a New York sin. Like, it's against the commandments to go in the outdoor you know what I mean? Because every grocery yeah. store, a lot of grocery stores have like, you know, the indoor that you go in and you kind of wrap around and then you come out the different door. And I went in the outdoor and they're cool with it because I'm the neighborhood, you know, I'm the village idiot. And so like I literally was stepped in the outdoor. Um, and I said, oh, como esta? You know, está bien? You know, like talking. And they looked like they had seen like dead people. I see dead people. <laughs> it was wild. 
It was wild. And I, so I, I want them to be okay too, right? Well, they, they with, with uh, addictions being suspended, with uh, T-Mobile and AT&T and a couple of other uh, cell phone carriers, they're going to, they're granting grace for 60 days, call in and make sure that your cell phone carrier is just like, like talk to them about like, look, I don't have a job right now and see what they're, you know, like I cannot have my phone cut off. Um, yeah. I know that there's some internet uh, providers that are not going to do shutoffs. Con Edison is not going to do shutoffs. Water cannot be shut. I mean, because we have to understand if they, if they did, they would be worsening this, pandemic they, they it, we, need we, to have they need to they need to have yep. air they need to have uh, electricity they we definitely need water if we're going to wash our hands every five minutes it's a, we it's need essential. water and someone was saying recently on the internet um that the internet itself has clearly determined that it is a utility as well right which is why it won't be shut off like yeah it, but, but, uh, but, and but, matter of fact spectrum is saying to students that the, even if you aren't already a, a member, Spectrum is saying if you're a student, they'll sign you up for free and you and won't have so, to pay for 30 or 60 days. See, and so now we, we understand because I, I didn't coronavirus and I'm not going to think it anymore because that's not appropriate. But coronavirus literally um, uh, taught us that. These kids need internet. I didn't realize the number of children who don't have internet in their homes in America. Right. People don't understand how broke. I mean, there are people that that are in positions like myself uh, that would be like, man, I'm broke. I'm broke. And, and, and you really need to. Yeah. You really, again, check what you're saying. Maybe you don't have as much money as you would like. Yeah. But we could go to various places in the world and we stand before them and in front of people who really have nothing. Yeah, the lady, the and lady they look, that's walking four miles to water for the day. Right. They would look at us see how our skin is like soft and you know it's the butters with vibrant and 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 see our clothes see our shoes mm -hmm. see that we are not skin and bone and then you know you think you're broke and then you don't even have to be that drastic you could be right here in this city and there are people who like I have a roof over my head. And then there are people in this city who have nothing. Like somebody has to do something about the homelessness because if we really are going to stop this, um, we're going to have to do something about the homeless because they're just out there in the street and getting the brunt of this. Yeah, they yeah. have to. They have to live near and be and be near in close contact with each other in order to survive being outside all of the time. I'm very concerned about the people in the subways because I, I I've been thinking about that. I talk, I've talked to Nina and I had a lunchtime um, session about it. Like uh, we not a session. We just talked like friends on the phone i don't know why i said that but like we were talking about the people in the subway systems that you know walk by us and that we engage with every day like on the train on the way to work like those people are going to, have to be treated as well and like valued as humans in society if we don't treat yeah if we don't treat the most vulnerable then we're we're just gonna keep the same things going right we can't have I mean, a lot of these people who are on the street, they have, you know, mental illness. We could thank Ronald Reagan for this because he's the one that dismantled uh, the mental health, the, the, the flimsy mental health care that we had back in the uh, in the 80s. Like, 
First Lady Rosalind Carter, she came up with a whole plan about how to deal with the mental health issue in this country. And uh, he just tore it all up. He not only didn't do what it was she was proposing, but cut funding to states so that they would have to cut the funding to their state mental institutions. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have now where you, it, it used to be if you went to an asylum and you were, and you needed the the care and the help. It wasn't an issue how how long you were going to stay there. If you were somebody who needed to be there for the rest of their lives, they were going to be there for the rest of their lives, and money wasn't an issue. But now, since the states don't have money to house people like that, what they do is okay. Uh, we'll give you three days worth of whatever your medicine is and put you on a bus out of this area so you won't be here. And usually the buses are sent to big cities, New York, Chicago. They go out to L.A. and they really go out to warmer climates because, you know, I can be out on the street all all day, all night, and I won't freeze to death. Mm -hmm. But that's why when you go by Port Authority, just Look at the people who are around Port Authority. Some of these people are in desperate need of care. Desperate. And every time I'm down there, I don't even like to be down there after midnight. Uh, I'm certainly, you know, like, mm -mm. It, it, that little that little strip that runs towards the water. You know, what I'm talking about between the Drain Reed and Port Authority. That's that is a pretty sketchy place. Like around midnight to like six a.m. Oh, you're talking about Forty First Street. Yeah, I had a friend that this was this happened during the day uh she was in uh fiddler on the roof the yeah. yiddish fiddler on the roof yeah. one of the nicest people you'd ever want to meet and she was and we were we, we, in between shows and she was coming back to do the evening show and as she was walking uh somebody came up and punched her in the back of the head just out of nowhere See. and ran and so she was shaken and uh she she never had experienced any kind of violence like that ever so it really shook her of and course. she wasn't able to do the show uh somebody had to go on her understudy had to go on for her Shit. but yeah that's what I that you are absolutely right but here's the th that person that did that um they they need health care yeah and they're unstable because the system doesn't provide for their mental health like the institution the government we we have turned our back on them for so long that it feels like it's a normal thing to do but we we collectively caused if you can go here the reasons why she got punched well i didn't do it and you didn't, I didn't did do. You. I didn't. But we live in a society that doesn't say like, like that. Like, Bo, who punched her, needs care. Like, like, like governmental, like care, like mental health care. Let's support this guy, so that he doesn't do things like that to your friend. Right. He needs to be in a place where now I don't think we should go back to what was happening in the 70s, 60s and the 50s where there were these asylums and just people were thrown in rooms and and have a door locked behind them and and right. and there was they were just basically being housed right. and be, being kept off of the street. What I'm saying is they need to go to a place where they get actual treatment and if there's somebody who is like extremely violent then they need to go to like a place that would you know handle that but this needs to be done with dignity these people yeah. have an illness like you wouldn't treat a cancer patient, patient like that way. exactly exactly so and and also like you're saying when we're thinking about what kind of society we want to have, we need to make sure that we have a society that that brings the best out of people. 
that they have the best chances. For me, I want to live in a world where everybody is encouraged to reach their highest human potential. Yeah. And and there and the things are in place for them to do that. All they have to do is do it. And and that means people being treated with dignity regardless of what kind of illness they have, whether it's a mental is- illness or a physical illness or a spiritual illness or an emotional illness. These are things that we need to deal with. And um, there can be things put into place that would, that would create jobs, that would make society healthier. Um, uh, th- these things can be done. Because when you tell me that there's no money for things to be done, and then I see, like, there are billionaires that have 10 yachts that, and each yacht looks like a cruise ship. And they can't use any of them at the same time. You know, and yeah. and, it's, it's and it's not that I'm saying that people can't have opulence. Yeah. And they can't have uh, nice things. But don't let greed dictate to you on how somebody is supposed to live. Yeah. Don't let because, don't let greed dictate the worthiness of another beautiful human being. Right. Exactly. Because, you know, even even during the depression, there were still some there were still some rich people who made it. They were still rich. You know? Yeah. Even when they were paying their, back then, you know, when they were paying their taxes, they were still rich. They are still rich today. There are families in this country that have been rich for a century. So um, it's not like all just because you're going to pay your fair share and just because we're going to have a society where people are treated with respect that all of a sudden you're going to be destitute. You're not. You're still going to be able to jump on a well, jump on a plane or whatever it is you're yeah, going when, to do once we and go. This. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're 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 still going to be able to ski uh, in Switzerland. You're still going to be able to go deep sea fishing. You're still going to be able to uh, watch the America's Cup. You can. You're still going to be able to do all of that. Everything. You're just. You're. What's different is you're not going to have so much money that. You can't buy politicians or judges or get your your family members out of uh, uh, criminal spots that yeah. they got themselves in. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to make Junior's uh, rape accusation disappear because you paid off all the right. Now, that's going to stop. <laughs> that has to stop. That has to stop. That has to stop. It ha- and it really does. It really does. Um, all because yeah. we choose to not to not share um, and and hold the truth of what we know in our heart. I mean, what we know in our hearts, if we really, really, you know, drill deep, deep down, you and I, Yolanda, beyond us knowing each other, we are dependent. There's an interdependence here. I need you to to survive. You know, I need you to survive. I need, a, we need, obviously we know this. That's why we're all in the world sitting in the house right now. We need each other to survive. Yes. We cannot afford for, even though there's 7.5 billion of us on this planet right now. Wow. The wow. fact that all of, that all of the people who are sitting in their homes right now, they're like, we can't, we can't lose a million. I don't want to be around. I don't want to see something like that. I don't want to. I don't. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, and they're saying, you know, people have projected like these horrific numbers that are far higher than one million. I don't want that to happen. And it's obvious we need one another. It's obvious. So, yeah, we need to make sure that we have a society where people thrive. I, and, and even, and I know this is going to, this is going to shock people. I'm a realist. I know that there are going to be 
racists and homophobes and misogynists and xenophobes and bigots and whatever like that. Mo a lot of those people are never going to change. If they haven't changed after Martin Luther King, yeah. after Barack Obama, yeah. after Harvey Milk, after all of these wonderful women and everything, they're not going to change. They don't want to change. So, and I'm not going to try to make them love everybody because I can't make them do that. Right. But they can be in their little house and whatever and hate on everybody as much as they want. What can't happen is that their hatred cannot affect others, which is what they want. They want their hatred to be able to affect others. And that's where it has to stop. That's where we their draw hatred. the line. Right now, we boldly we draw the line. You cannot do that. No. All no. of the soldiers of love. I, you know what the thing that the thing and I'm sorry, I'm about to like jump off again the the, the damn down. Yeah, this is your show. Jump the, off. Yeah, the Locus. diamond board of love. Jump like, off, Locus. Listen, I'm about to. I'm about to because here's the deal. We, the people who love like each other and the people that are like fortified in their heart space towards positivity, we are the ones that often pre coronavirus, I don't know what's going to happen after the fact, but we've always traditionally been the, the more silent types. We allow an asshole that occupies the White House to treat all kinds of hatred and vitriol and, and nonsense. 24 7 to us and yet us lights myself included i'm afraid to go live on fucking facebook instagram and twitter and all these other spaces because i'm afraid of what the next person will think about me or what my family will think about me or or what people are going to say and do i'm timid and i'm filled with love and yet we 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 shrink ourselves down and allow that asshole on Pennsylvania Avenue to to um spread all kinds of of nonsense and i hope that coronavirus i don't i don't know what it's going to do and how it's affecting everybody but i know for me it's definitely told me and pardon my pardon my language Yolanda but you follow me on the ins, on the on the thing so you know how real I am. <laughs> this coronavirus is is telling me to step my pussy up. Literally like literally like the whole thing. Step it up because literally people are dying. <laughs> <laughs> and and we have allowed this asshole to continually feed us lies and pretend like this isn't a thing that matters. Meanwhile, I'm sitting over in Queens being like, oh, I hope that these people that I worked with on Broadway or these people that I worked with in this show in Pennsylvania or the people I was singing with under a roller coaster or the people that I was, you know, like, I'm not going to go through my fucking resume, but I'm going to tell you something. Like, I'm worried about how those people are going to think about my shit of streaming love and positivity and light. Meanwhile, we, we, we go, oh, that asshole. But we allow him to do that. And I'm trying to figure out, and I'm getting really, really close, but I'm trying to figure out how do we start allowing our messages of light and love and, hey, I see you. Someone put a hashtag up. N not someone. I'm going to name her, um, but if I can remember. Dr. Kelly Johnson, one of my friends from undergrad, literally put up this hashtag because she's going into the community and she's making, like, ham sandwiches and turkey sandwiches and roast beef sandwiches. They got a full menu of free – a full menu – a free sandwiches going out to her community in Chattanooga. Shout out to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Shout out to Dr. Kelly Johnson doing amazing work. She is doing this stuff, and I'm like, we need to be talking about her. We need we need to be talking about you. That the, the whole reason why we're here, Yolanda. Sorry about my tangent on uh, no, Chardonnay, the tangent. but the whole reason why we're here, you and I. Like at 10.07 p.m. The reason why we're here is because I followed you heavily. The algorithm knows I love your ass. You not only know that I love your ass, but the algorithm knows that I love your ass. And literally, you are posting truth. You know, and, not, and not truth with a lowercase t, but truth with a capital T every day about the world that you want to inhabit. You are calling out the bullshit and you're calling in the people that believe as you believe. That's the reason why I said, hey, let's get on here and talk about this tonight. Because literally 
we like and i don't know about the, there's there's five lights watching right now which is the reason why we're still going we're going for the five lights and um that are watching like the reason why we're going i'll put it this way the way we're going to get out of all of this is by standing up in the truth of the lights of what we are that idea that you have about how to about how to connect with the world from a place of light and positivity don't wait for permission but if you need it i'm telling you right now create it i've got friends out there that are that are um that are wanting to create yoga classes and reiki classes online in this time don't worry about what um what you know that bitch over in such and such place is going to say about your work or how they're going to side eye you I, oh oh here's t don't worry about how 57 people saw your shit, but only two liked it. I'll say it again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it again. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry about how, how, how 300 people saw your shit, but only one liked it. Your responsibility lights that are watching and lights that are going to see this on replay and your Londa as your, as a fabulous fucking light. You are our responsibility is to keep showing up and doing as Mr. Rogers told our asses to do. Mr. Rogers said, (laughs) you know where I'm going. Mr. Rogers said every time you see a disaster and every time you see the world seeming to fall apart out here, look for the helpers. And I'm going to add right. an addendum to that. Mr. Rogers is perfect as he fucking is. But I'm going to say, look for the helpers and look for the lights. And if you don't know what lights mean, look for the positive people. Mm-hmm. They're everywhere right now. I'm sor- sorry to this man <laughs> and, and woman and child that is dying from coronavirus. Literally, sorry to them. Look to them. Honor the lives that they led. And honor the people that love them. But then after you finish being sad. And be as sad as you need to be baby. I would never tell you not to be. But after you're sad. Remember your light. Remember who you are. And then start looking. There are five lights watching right now. I got the gift of talking to another fabulous light on on the line right now. Yolanda Fibonacci. Literally. We're out here. We out here. Um, and I want to, sh- and I'm going to shout out pivot. I'm going to pivot to a-, a mutual friend of ours. That's actually convenient because I wasn't thinking about the mutual friendship before I actually fucking said this shit on live, but our mutual friend Shakira Imani. Um, oh yes. When I say that coronavirus was happening Wednesday into Thursday, I think that's the day all of these motherfuckers are stringing together now, but Wednesday into Thursday, at five in the morning, Shakira Imani and I were, I don't call her by her stage name, Shakira Imani, so who am I pl- fucking playing with? Shakira and I were on, we were we were up. My heart that night was thinking about the 114,000 children in New York public schools, New York City public schools, who were not going to eat if school closed. And that shit, sorry, that shit troubled me like in the waters of my soul. Mm-hmm. The th- I mean, like this was not, a, and I'm sorry, people, people think Yolanda, I don't know, I don't give a fuck about what people think. I feel that people think sometimes that I'm being extra, that my daddy gave me that programming and, and tried to break me down and abuse me and all that stuff. Like I... I think people think that I'm like extra when I feel when I in in what I'm doing on the internet, or they they think that because I'm a performer, perhaps I'm performing. I'm performing, but let me tell you something. What's real, and I don't know how to prove. I can't prove shit to anybody, so I'm gonna stop proving it. What's real is that Wednesday night in the morning, I was deeply, deeply, deeply disturbed, deeply disturbed by the children. 114,000 of them. That's not a small number. 114,000 no. kids without homes. And if schools shut down, they were going to actually they were going to actually have to in their lives encounter being without a sandwich. Without a sandwich and some juicy motherfucking juice. 
And those kids are going to have to understand maybe their parents had shielded, I'm sorry, their maybe their parents, their parents had shielded them from being, from knowing the level of their poverty. Maybe their normal Yolanda was that, you know, food, I go to school, mama says I love you, she hugs me, and then she go, and then I go to school, and they feed me breakfast, and they feed me lunch. I was a kid, no, no shade, I was a kid that ate free lunch in Richmond motherfucking Virginia. I was a kid that literally, that my mother gave me nickels and dimes and pennies to go and pay for free lunch. Not free lunch. I'm talking crazy. For reduced lunch is what it's called. Reduced right. lunch. But like reduced lunch, when I ha I've had free and reduced lunch. I used to work the counter as a student worker in the lunch line to, to, to offset my lunch cost. So I, so I did stay up on Wednesday night thinking about those kids. Because my mother never said to me, it wasn't until, it's been recent, like in the last couple of years that I realized how like poor, not poor, but like maybe poor. I don't know what the fuck. Maybe we were poor. I don't, my mother did a very good job of, of, of giving us so much love that free lunch now feels like a thing to me. But I never knew that it was a, that it was a bad thing as a child. And so, like, I'm sorry, guys. Just give me a moment because this is my live. But I'm going to, like, love on my mom because she literally never, she never made it evident to me that we were on free or redu reduced lunch. And even being on reduced lunch now doesn't feel to me like a bad thing. That's what my mother did. She literally, she, she never made me feel like reduced lunch was a bad thing. And so I stay up in the middle of the week on a, on a week night thinking about the kids in New York public schools who who literally some of them for the first time if they're like me will have to reckon with the fact that something's not right. And the people in their lives may not um somebody in the, somebody may not, you know, have told them their socioeconomic status in the hood and yet they're having to confront this challenge in their world. Stacia's saying, yeah, nobody, especially no child, should have to engage that. No one should feel stigmatized or shamed for poverty. And this is what we're... I'm sorry, Yolanda. Don't apologize. No, Say you're something. Right. Say anything. Yes. Say something. No, I, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, um, I've been working with kids for... Years upon years upon years upon years, like very, very, you know, when I moved here to New York, also from Virginia, without even doing a background check or anything, New York just, you know, I've never waited tables or anything like that. My day jobs have been in the New York public school system and um, or being a governess to rich people, yeah, um, to rich children or an au pair. Right. And uh, working in the New York public school system, what I have seen working, you know, from first grade on up to 12th, is that the real little ones have no idea. They have, they have no idea what's going on. But by the time they get into like second grade, yeah, they know. They know their lives are different, especially when they get around other kids and they're like, it's the ones who live in shelters, um they know they, can they know what's it. going on yeah oh yeah because they can see they can see that it's different because they're going to school with people who you know they know that they who live differently th who live differently they live different they, they live differently like they are going to go back to the same apartment over and over again whereas they might have to move that night they might have to move the a week later and they'll miss school and everything. So, so they know, they know what's going on. And uh, I, I, I think that the stigma comes from that there is this attitude that people don't have money because they are lazy. Right. And right. Uh, you can't, you can't, you can't be somebody who has 
two or more jobs and be lazy. That's just you not can't possible be somebody... to love. That's not possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, can't, you can't be in the shelter system and be lazy. Do you know how many hoops those people have to jump through? I know about the hoops, in order... and, and, and I know about the danger the... they're in to be vigilant in, in the – yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's like there are things that we take for granted, those of us who have a place that we go to. Yeah. Like you have your keys, you have your lease, or you have your agreement with your landlord and whatever. And these people have to deal with, excuse me, they have to deal with, um, oh, I need to get back to wherever by a certain time where there won't be a bed tonight. Right. Or, you know, so, so that's not, that's not late. That's, that's not lazy. It's not. That's not lazy. These people are functioning under a level of worry and anxiety that would kill most people. You know, yeah. there are people there are people who will have a complete and utter breakdown because they can't go play golf when they want. Or and or they're 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 put they have they throw a conniption fit because somebody's got their lunch order wrong. These are people who are dealing with, I have to every night, every day, come up with a plan on how I'm going to have a roof over my my head and my child's head tonight. So uh, I think also with this stillness, I think, yes, I hope there will be people who understand like, wow, nothing is running. Maybe people aren't as lazy as I thought they were. Right. And as far as and as far as people who are out and out, like the real, all of us know somebody lazy. I know people who are lazy <laughs> who are rich as Midas. I know people who are late. I know some, we know what lazy know looks they're not, like. They're, <laughs> I, 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 they're not friends of mine. Yeah. But I've seen I've seen lazy, and when I see it played out in front of me, I'm like. That person doesn't have life skills. That person has a, a mental or a, an emotional issue. Mm -hmm. That person needs to be in therapy or something yeah. to find out why they are like that and then fix it yeah. because it's unnatural. It's unnatural. So yeah, some, have you ever seen it? Like you, you were just talking about how children are children smiling all the time, curious about everything, right. ask you all of these questions. Right. You give them a task to do. Like if you, it's like, I'm all Montessori. I'm totally yes, Montessori. Montessori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm like, if you start them early, like having them have joy and keeping their room straight, mm -hmm. helping around the house, yeah. you start that early, it's not going to be hard when they become teenagers are going to be in their system to do this. Yeah. So a They're person normal. becomes lazy either because of what they see or something has happened to them. To cause them to, just, to, to, to cause such apathy that they're like, I just not, I'm not going to even try, which we talked about earlier um, in, in tonight. Like we, we, yeah, just the apathy of like, why bother mm -hmm. cause, causes that level of, of laziness and what's sad about that laziness just to add to what you're saying which is beautiful um what's sad about that laziness for me as a social organizer and as a hopeful lead locus although i don't need to be the lead locus um but i think you're a lead locus um, i think you're a lead well, locus. thanks but i mean hopefully what happens as in my work as a lead locus is that i show or demonstrate to the lazy people, and I'm not saying that in, in condescension, but to those who are not as motivated. I'll call them the demotivated. Hashtag lazy. Mm -hmm. But the demotivated. In the demotivated, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we show them through our light that they have gifts in them. Someone asked um, last week, because I'm still friends with preacher friends from college um, who now have churches and are senior pastors or youth pastors, what have you. They were like, what do you feel is the, the greatest need on the earth for, you know, for people? Like from a, from a ministry standpoint. And they don't usually expect me to chime in because I'm a dick-sucking queen. But 
I do still engage those conversations because I'm still a child of God. I am both simultaneously a dick sucking queen and also a child of God. And that's, that is my intersectionality. Okay, honey. And okay. That's what it looks like in this life in 2020. Okay. So because of that, I chimed back in and I said to him, I said, he said, what do you think the greatest need is? And I said, people not recognizing and standing in their gifts. And Yolanda, like, think about all people have fallen into despair because they're either not treated or they're not loved or they don't they don't see anybody who looks like them in their communities or they're demotivated. Um, They're doing this because they don't recognize that the spirit of God. God, I feel, uh, call, don't call it God if that makes you uncomfortable. Goodness. You, you, do, you don't re- re- remember who you're talking to. I know who I'm talking to. You know. I, I, I know what I know who the who the fuck you is. I'm like there are people that, <laughs> there are people that are watching right now that when I said God, they were like, whoop, let me the fuck up out of here. So I mean wait, I know, before wait yes. wait, hold it. Yep. Uh brother and sister atheists and agnostics. Mm. Please do not when when people bring up well in this conversation. Uh, I full disclosure, I am a believer. I have been 10 different religions. I'm Jewish now. Yes. Um, I am a lover of God. I am a Jesus freak, all of that. And I say that for tr- full transparency. Yes. I, I respect anybody's path and this society needs atheists and agnostics. Speak on it. So Speak that's on. where we are right now. I don't know where they're going to go. People change all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to convert anybody, but um, we're not throwing virgins in the, into uh, volcanoes, <laughs> and we're not uh, we're we're not um, tying children to posts so that birds can come eat them and. All kinds of craziness. There are other right. kinds of craziness going on with religious zealotry. Yep. But I uh, th- let me tell you. St- oh, I'm a, before you go, Stacia is saying, I think at their core, most people want to be productive, but our systems aren't structured to nurture people's inner gifts and vocations. So our last look, uh, conversation. Keep going. What were you going to say? I was just going to say that I have been, there have been atheists that had ministered to me and they had no idea they did it oh me too oh i can uh, i don't know her name but let I, me well, go on yeah 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 go on yeah 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 i mean like uh i don't think i don't think dr neil degrasse tyson identifies as an atheist i think he says he's an agnostic yeah but uh Powerful. stephen hawking St- dr stephen hawking was an atheist yeah and um uh when I read what those men or listen to what those men, when they talk about the universe and the laws of physics, mm-hmm. I start, it's, 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 I, I'm, I am, I, I get excited. I was like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I, and you know, to me, when, when, I hear, believe... when, I, when I hear them speaking about it, 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 it's, it feels like church sometimes. It is church. It's worship. They don't know that. They don't know that, and they would never call it that. But if you're going to sit down and explain to me how, uh, how, how, what kind of distances there are in the universe, and yes. how this planet was actually made, and yes. how the moon was made, and how the sun, I, you have, I'm. That's and, and, crazy. and uh, not to interject, but when someone says to me that it that. Our, someone said that the sun in our universe that we look up to in the sky is also doing an orbit in the universe. I want you to think about that shit. So, yeah, the sun that's in our solar system, because our our solar system is moving around in the galaxy, our Milky Way galaxy. The and sun the galaxy, is moving to Milky Way. Well, yeah, but I mean, but we're moving through space. There is somebody made a meme of how that what the what the pattern looks like as the solar system 
moves through space, moving through the part of the Milky Way that we are in. And the Milky Way itself is moving. It's moving closer to Andromeda. Right. And, and, and when, when they go into deep detail about all of these things, and I'm not even good at math, but if there is somebody who can break down on how everything fits a, a fits a theorem, yes. a proof, yes. of, that, that is absolutely, that's one of the reasons why I chose Fibonacci as my name. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm like, um, so I am, I am a believer that believes and appreciates science. Yes. I am not one of these. I, like I told you, I am a believer. I am a Jesus freak. I am all of those things. I have read several uh, spiritual texts. I've read the Vedas. Mm -hmm. I've read all kinds of things. I do not believe this planet is 6,000 years old. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 this planet is 15, uh, not this, no, the, the, not the planet, but the we, solar system, the everything galaxy. came, right. everything came into an existence 15 billion years ago. Yeah. And, uh, Science. we evolved, we evolved. That doesn't, that doesn't negate creation mm -hmm. for me. So uh, if there are any um, atheists that are still, uh, you know, hanging on, uh, no, don't, please don't go unless you have to go. Uh, but don't go because it got right. into a spiritual kind right. of. I, I, be I believe that that presence has deposited a gift in every single one of us. Exactly. And I, and I believe that that gift, when it's squandered through laziness and a lack of application, and it could be because someone didn't believe in you or someone abused you or you think the world is a fucked up place and it's not cool. It could be a, a number of things that fill in the blank about what your thing is about why you're not living your fullest expression of your gift. Or while you, or if you don't know what your gift is, why you're not exploring what your gift could be. Maybe I'm interested in science. Maybe maybe I'm interested in aviation. Personally, I'm passionate about Jello. I love Jello. Um, you know, like mm -hmm. what, whatever your thing is, maybe you've not gotten curious about what that gift is. Or maybe you don't walk in your gift because you think it's all going to hell in a handbasket anyway. First thing I want to share with you is that hell is not a real thing for me. So you don't have to worry about going there. And the world can't go there because in my world, that doesn't exist. Therefore, if hell doesn't exist and the world isn't going to hell in the handbasket, then you're going to be on this motherfucker for the next 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 years. All of us on this call. If coronavirus doesn't take us the fuck out, we're, that's right, Stacia, hell is a mindset. If coronavirus does not take us the fuck out, we're going to be on this motherfucker for the next 50 years. I will be, personally, probably on here for the next 50, 60 years. That is alarming and daunting to me and very exhausting to even think about. That being said, if I am, I've got to be very, very meticulous about the ways in which I want to live on this earth. I want to identify the gifts in me that I bring and I want to give them freely so that m this motherfucker doesn't have to be suffering for myself and for other people.
And if your gift is a basket weaver, singing a song, writing a poem, maybe your gift, because people, these people that think that their gifts don't matter or that they don't have gifts, if you can, let me tell you something right now. As a person who's bo- who's like 51% extrovert but 49% introvert and shut the fuck up, y'all don't think I'm shut the fuck up, but let me tell you something. I'm definitely shut the fuck up in my energy sometimes. <laughs> People don't think it. I listen, Leonda. I walked out. I, I walked out of motherfucking Broadway stage and ran to the left, and the whole people standing behind the gate with the big scary black man that they hire to scare the fans, and they're lovely. They're all teddy bears. The person, like the people standing there, were like, "Come the fuck back! Come the fuck back!" And I was like. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm trying to go home. They're like, sign my play, but I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm trying to go home. Like, let me tell you something. I am definitely 45%, uh, 49% introvert, but let me tell you something. I am not about the business of letting these gifts not be manifest in the world, especially when I have to be here for another 50 years. I don't want to live in a world, Yolanda, where people are not operating in their gifts. Like, I want you. Well, you go on. Go, go, go. Please. I totally, I totally, I'm totally with you. And I, since you've been talking about this, I've been thinking about the parable of the talent. Yes. So. Is that Torah? Is that Torah? It's, it, I think it goes exactly along what you were saying like if for for those people who don't know about this uh judeo-christian parable that uh jesus told about how a wealthy landowner uh had to go away for a while i guess he was on a business trip and so he has three workers and he gave one uh he gave one one talent he gave one uh, two talents and he gave another one five talents and uh the one with five talents went and did things so to multiply the talents so that he wound up with 10 talents the one with two talents did something and multiplied his up to four the one that had the one talent buried his so oh, wait, 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 wait 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 i'm gonna stop you right now the one that had the toilet paper, the one roll. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. The one that had the one roll of shaman. What happened to the one with the one roll of shaman? Go on, tell me what he, happened to the- he. He buried it, and. He was like, okay, this is the smart thing because this guy really loves his toilet paper. And if I lose this toilet paper, he's going to be mad. So I'm going to bury this toilet paper. And so when the wealthy landowner came back and he was very proud of uh, the, the one who came up who had his 10, he rewarded him with more. He was very happy with the guy with, with four and rewarded him with more. And then... He's like, so what did you do? And he's like, oh, you're going to be happy. I buried it. And he's like, you buried it. You didn't even do anything with it. So you could have at least done something that I could like at least have some in. You did absolutely nothing with what I gave you. And so he basically took his town and fired him. Yep, 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 yep. That's fine. So, That's so- yeah, yeah. So, so that's it. I, I'm hearing what you're saying as far as like with what our gifts are yeah, and, let me, and, let me, and or gonna, what I'm, our purpose is or what our calling is. And I'm going to anchor this. I'm going to anchor this. Yes, 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 yes. To everything you just said, I hear you in my heart. And like, I'm going to, I'm going to remind myself as we're in this space, because we're all creatives here. I assume the people that are watching these three people watching right now, specifically on, on Facebook and like that's the full inception of thought for me it's like if if i meant to tell the three people who are watching right now that they are loved and that they are valued and that they should hold hope in their heart no matter what cnn huffington post facebook twitter and all the mediums say if we are meant if we're through serendipity if if you hit me up last night after watching last night's live and said, Hey, let let's chop and I asked you I was like, Hey, let's chop it up tomorrow night. 
And tomorrow night had to work because, uh, like today had to work because tomorrow can't work because you have another commitment online, which I love mm-hmm. that you have commitments online because like that's the future. Let's my Aquarius ass is telling y'all this is the future. Like like it's it's we're gonna still get out and play and coronavirus is gonna coronavirus is gonna end and we're gonna be okay. <laughs> we're gonna be okay. We really are gonna be okay. But a lot of the future start start gonna start. We got to jump. Coronavirus pushed us into what the future looks like for us. Um, and we're still going to go to plays and theaters, and there's still going to be restaurants, and like we're we're going to still be social and meet up physically. But we're going to also see more Jetsons esque digital life. I mean, that's just evolution and efficiency of time, and all of the meetings that I take both in my day job and professionally with Love City. Um, personally, they're all done in the cloud, like in the internet. This is where the world is going. Coronavirus is pushing us further that way. I'm saying that why not use these tools right now to spread the message of love and positivity. And I'm like, if two people are watching and I get to tell them, I love you, the two people, Yolanda, you yourself. I love mm-hmm. you. I love you. I don't see you as much as I want to, but like, I, but I remember being sad in New York City because I was like, we never see each other. But then I realized that the New York, the New York life is that we are just scattered. Um, but let me tell you something: if all of this had to happen for me to tell you right now at ten thirty nine p.m. On March 17th, that I love you through the internet, Yolanda, I love you. I love you, Andre. I love you. And the two people that are watching, I love you. And I feel like the magic of life that I believe in has called us to this one pinpoint in our lives. When the grand master, if you will get woo-woo, I don't really believe in this shit, but I'm talking about it like I like I do. But I'm just making this up right now. But I'm just like, this is the magic that lives in my head. If the grand designer, when he was plotting out all of... Seisha, I love you too, man. Like, when the grand designer was plotting out the trajectory of our lives, it was giving us our parents and saying, all right, these would be the two, you know... I I love my parents, the one that's gone and the one that's still here, but they were not informed, educated enough to raise this Aquarius child. (laughs) (laughs) But but when the grand designer said, Joyce, why Stith? She would hate that I was even given that on the internet because someone's going to steal our identity day after tomorrow. Let her tell it. But if Joyce Y. Stith and Willie H. Stiff, may he rest in peace, even though he was an asshole to me in, in, in the living, but like he's he's a gift to me in the in the spiritual my dad and i have actually made up in the spiritual like he's actually okay. my, he's my homie in the spiritual he was an asshole to me throughout my life in the physical but in the spiritual like my dad is my homie if joy stiff and why stiff joy's why stiff and willie h stiff were on my timeline they were placed there and now all of a sudden at 10:41 p.m. 317, March 17th, Yolanda, you and I are talking to the world, hundreds of people, literally hundreds of people. I'm not making that up because people go back and watch my shit later and then they don't like it for whatever reason, (laughs) but like they watch it. The 300 people that will watch this, I want you to know that I love you. If you make it to this point in the video, I want you to know that I love you. And I want to, I want you to know that somewhere in my heart on a real, on some real shit, On some real shit or on some Harry Potter shit, whatever you want to choose, at 10.42 p.m. on March 17th, we are here together. And I want you to know that I love you. And I want you to know that I will continue to show up in this way for the two of you for the rest of my life. For the two of you. Not for the two grand. Not for the two million. I think John Legend today had 191,000 people watching him play piano. That's cool, too. Love him. Would have had his babies if Christy hadn't br- if hadn't beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so he had 191,000. I have two. And guess what? You didn't start out with two. You had more than that. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Oh, yeah, I didn't start with two. I had more than that. But what my point is, yes, Stacia, what you're saying, deep roots. We have come to this place of 1043 where I'm saying that I love you. And I'm, and, and I'm going to round this up by, like, Yolanda, what, what is your good word? In, in, in church traditions and Pentecostal traditions, we call this the gospel. The gospel actually translates to the good news. Um, but if you don't fuck with that shit, I'm still going to ask Yolanda, what is the good news of 317? Ooh, okay. Um, okay, so let me just, I say this a lot um, when given this opportunity, because I think this is like, this is a piece of knowledge and a word that has fallen out of our lexicon. When I say the word terrorism, what is the, what is the antonym? What is the opposite word of terrorism? The opposite word of terrorism, I, I, I hope that wasn't rhetorical. The opposite word of terrorism for me is if, okay, so I'm, I'm terrified. The opposite is like love and openness, open, like uh, no fear. Terrorism makes me afraid. Terrorism is like the, in, like, I feel like terrorism is the installation of fear. Like people in theory, like instilling and planting seeds of fear in other people. The opposite of that would be to plant seeds of hope and love. Okay, that is all great, and that took you a couple of sentences to say. It did. I'm and sorry. I, it, was a, it was a, no, 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 no. It was a trick question because I just want to prove to you how we need to shift our society. Tell me. That we let a word fall out of our lexicon, and that word is meliorism. Meliorism is the opposite of terrorism, and Basically, everything that you just said is uh, the definition of meliorism. Tell you can look me. it up oh, yeah. on the on the internet. I will. But 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 the thing is, is that that was a word that was used uh, a lot in the Victorian era, and it fell out of our lexicon. It came into our lexicon the same time as dildo did, and dildo <laughs> made it. And and meliorism didn't. You are hitting something in me. I don't know if 13-year-old me or 12-year-old me or 11-year-old me read this in a book or a teacher said it. But the, when you said that word, I was like, I know that word. Keep talking about it because I found it on Wikipedia. Okay, so, so, Jesus, I, so good. I, I've, said, I've said this in other places as well. So if, if uh, we have an understanding of what terrorism is and that now we, have, we know that there is a word that is the opposite and all of us have our different ideas of what the opposite of terrorism is so if we have meliorism then it's possible that somebody could be a meliorist yes that it's possible to have meliorist cells where people get together and they plan how they are going to go out and commit acts of meliorism oh on God. how they are going and how they are going to be a meliorist in their life in oh order to affect God. change Wait, I'm, I'm gonna, so, I, I, I want you to tell what your what your what your word what what your definition is i want to read wikipedia's definition real quick meliorism is the idea in metaphysical thinking holding that progress is a real concept leading to an improvement of the world keep going jesus I mean, like literally, like literally, this is something that literally, like I know that we're not thinking that we're not thinking coronavirus on here, but the gift of this situation that I want to acknowledge that will literally put peace in my soul as I eat my breakfast in the morning is the fact that like an antonym to this, uh, Stacia just gave fire to what you said. Stacia online on Facebook just gave fire to what you said. Literally, the hope in my heart. How do you spell that, Stacia? Okay, here we go, Stacia. I'm gonna spell it for you. Um, it is spelled M E L I O R I S M. Once again, that's M E L I O R I S M. 
if you put that in Google, the definition at the top, as this has been shared to us by Yolanda, will make you want to shout. It holds that humans can, through their interference with processes that would otherwise be natural, produce an outcome, which is an improvement over the aforementioned national... Woo! I can't even finish this. Ah! One second, I'll try so, so, so let's, let's tie up everything that we said. We started this talking about what are we going to do in this downtime? Yes. What are we going to do as we are still? Well, this is a cell right now. Yeah. We are having a cell and we are making our, uh, me, our melioristic, um, plans. Yes. We're, we're, we're inflicting the meliorism on our cells and we need to, uh, look at the, apply the meliorism to our bodies, yes. to our minds, our yes. souls and our spirit. And then it will be easier to go out when we are allowed to go out. But even in, in any contact with people and the way you think about people, use meliorism to do that. So if you think about and just only do this so that you know what it is you need to do the opposite of, if a, if a, if a terrorist is going to go out and strap bombs to themselves to, uh, go into a crowded place to blow everybody up and uh, take themselves out with it. Well, the opposite of that would be, you would go into a place that would bring more life to people and amplify your life in the meantime. You have and been, that could you, be- you, you have like literally, uh, keep your thought, don't forget it. You, I'm just gonna say this brief, you have, ex you have inspired the fuck out of me <laughs> and like i'm not putting on or performing because i don't give a fuck about whoever sees this or who's watching it now you have not like there is a name for what the fuck i'm doing yolanda what we are doing smeliorism smeliorism obviously you just didn't obviously, know you had a name to you uh, you're like Duh. like i'm like wow Obviously, this is what this is what you are doing. And I want everybody, all four of us, whoever, <laughs> yes. I want you to think about notice the feeling that you are having hearing this. Whatever that feeling is, amplify that chase after things that give you that. And that is your act of meliorism. Your act of meliorism might be like, I am a better person when I'm painting, when I'm singing, when I'm reading a book, when I'm taking a walk, when I'm uh, nice to people, when I'm laughing, when I'm doing all kinds of things. I was going to say making love, but n nobody can do that unless you are living with whoever it is that you're doing that with. Right. Everybody is like, is, and this is another reason why I think that this is a, a spiritual slowdown. Like celibacy is being practiced right now. It really you is can't... because I can I can name right and I'm not to, not to put my tea on the internet but I can name one person right now. I there's one person in my mind right now that if you and I were not talking. <laughs> okay. Go on. You <laughs> you are I mean, I don't know. If people are saying that you have to, we have to do social distancing. I, I'm selling that. Like, I'm, I'm not touching him. I'm not. Oh, I got you. Oh, I understand what you're doing. It's, 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 it's a, it's virtual. Okay. It's, that's it, safe. It, 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 well, it's, uh, it's virtual. And also like what I'm speaking to is like, like I would not ordinarily be celibate, but the universe is saying to all of us right now, you ain't doing that. Right. And so right. what are you what are you saying? What is what does a celibate what does a celibacy represent? Well, I mean, basically in every in 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 every religious tradition, at some point celibacy, celibacy is called upon for some reason. And it's not as a punishment. Like I don't me personally, I don't think that if you are a priest or a nun celibacy should be 
inflicted upon you. It should celibacy should be a choice because it's not yeah. really a sacrifice if somebody's forcing you to do it. That's true. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in the in the in the Christian tradition, and we we go off on another three hours on this, but basically, the celibacy is you are saving yourself for God, and yes. You can read about the ecstasy of St. Teresa that she would actually have full out. I'm not saying like the Holy Spirit entered her in a way. She had orgasms when she worshiped. Oh, wow. And uh -huh. where is, and, where is the, uh, the, the e-course for that? You can just go on. I'm serious. Uh, be careful, though. Uh, because that's, it could be scary, I'm you sure, know? I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, Keep going. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's also meliorism in that. I mean, like, it, as far as uh, sex is concerned, now this is, have you ever hear, heard of Hero Gos, a Hero Gosmos? Um, a Hero Gamos. A Hero Gamos. How, what was that? So that is the spirituality that happens with sex. Ah. Oh, and, yeah. Okay, okay. It makes sense. Yep, 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 yep. And originally, it was said that it could only happen between a man and a woman. But I think well, people have since sense. found out that that... That doesn't make any sense because, yeah. It does, that's not the case. I mean, it, it definitely... It, it definitely does happen. I mean, well, it, it doesn't happen to every male and female. Because right. there are some people who are just there and just holding still for it and whatever. Right. And they are not present for it at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is there is something about uh, uh, the union between two people that if people are, if both people are holding the same uh mental intent and emotional intent mm -hmm. there's things things are going to happen so there's yeah. ameliorism in that and so this is this is all of the amelia i mean you're a meliorist you're a locust you're going to jump up with your strong legs and be in this swarm of meliorists that are going to go around the world and as long as we keep our thoughts clear on what it is that we are going for and uh and be adamant about what we will and will not tolerate we will we'll be fine that's what that is for the hundreds of, I mean, the, for the hundreds of people that run that for the hundreds of people <clears throat> excuse me that are going to watch this however long cuz it's internet so it's there forever you just gave us our marching orders. <laughs> like you just gave us our command. Like, if, like if you are, and and to me, you are a spiritual giant. Oh my goodness. Um, I do. I do think that the way that wait, you... wait till I tell my therapist. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. But I mean, the way that the way to me, the way that you carry yourself in the world, and speaking up about social just, justice issues, and about the ways in which you like you protect. Or you advocate for the 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 suffer the the people who are suffering. Um, I really do think that you are a commander in the fleet, um, and that's not trying to give you a distinction of better than anybody else. That's just saying like you are speaking this truth. I see you speaking this truth daily, and if you are calling us to be bold in our meliorism. Mm -hmm. And be un and be unashamed in the fact that we want to imagine this world as better than the way we encountered it, and better than the ways in which we see what's being manifested right now. Um, I'm gonna like I'm, we gotta we gotta end in like in like five in ten minutes, but like the because I could talk to you forever. <laughs> right me. that's right i think we've been going on for like two hours it's and some this is the longest but it's been a joy i've, I've been enjoying i'm here this, I, it's been a joy i regret absolutely fucking nothing I, absolutely nothing 
when we when we think about the 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 task that is assigned ahead of us because we're not the ones that are imagining that this thing is going to be over stacia says love commanders like we are the ones we, we I, I feel oh like, that's deep that's i know deep. love commanders and then she's talked about again then she turned around and said salamanders what are you talking about salamander it's sal- a salamanders like people that they can transmute or they can change i'm trying to see what, what what she's saying about love commanders and salamanders she could be how like me but <laughs> <laughs> explain yourself stacia clearly in this room but um yolanda is calling us to meliorism and this idea that we hope for a world that's better than the one that we have and we will not back down and we will not stop sharing and we will not stop boldly proclaiming that like there's gifts within all of us right and and and, and that we have the capacity in our lifetime i feel like a time i feel like the town crier you know that god is standing in the middle and i see the jesus is coming soon guys in the seven train they're down there every time if you go to um 34th street at uh no no not 30 is it 34 where is it no it's um at 42nd street if you go to the 42nd street um exchange between the seven train and the bdfm if you go there at the top of the first stairs coming from the BDFM, there are always two people of varying genders and identities standing there with their signs, their tracks, and their played pre-recorded sermon. They really believe that Jesus is coming for your ass right now. And that's cool too. If you like have a passion in your soul for anything like they do, now is the time in coronavirus. Now is the time for you to stand up and be counted. We need you advocating for um, light and love and humanity and meliorism in our local government. We mm-hmm. need we need it in our regional affairs we need it in our mm-hmm. national affairs we need it in our mm-hmm. global affairs and i need you to, mm-hmm. i need to tell everybody who's listening right now we are not weak we are not nope. um left at the mercy we are not left at the mer- i need to get in the camera because i'm gonna post this later we are not left at the mercy of what is happening or what we think is happening to us we're completely right. in a place of power to mm-hmm. literally stand up in our light and say we believe that her- that human beings and none of them are illegal by the way nope. we believe that humans deserve love and compassion and they deserve it in the form they deserve it in the form of being Someone, treated like a human being. Being treated like a human being. Being treated like a human being. Yep. And it sounds like, and I know this is true because I follow you on social, okay. Yolanda and I believe that this is possible. And we believe that it's possible for you too. And so I'm going to end this um space i gotta turn up my music because i forgot about that like you know it's like a good like southern church service <laughs> if you could hear this music you would freak out <laughs> i can't i can't it's like, i'm gonna have to watch it later it's like new orleans bop is the worst thing it wasn't like peaceful like it would be a great moment for peaceful shit but like the universe didn't want that i'm gonna tell all of you with yolanda what is your last word yolanda Meliorism. Meliorism. Let us figure out what that is day by day. Let us continue to share it in these times of coronavirus and beyond. And let us always just hold that we are here for each other. Stacia says thanks for holding and taking up space. Stacia and I have a podcast (laughs) called Taking Up Space that will be happening very, very soon. And in the meantime, thank you, Yolanda. I have a podcast. Oh. I have a podcast called uh, "This Could Be Us," but you keep voting Republican. Wait, is that, real, is, that a real, is that a real podcast? 
Yes, I have a I have a test uh, I have a test episode up right now where I'm reading from Toni Morrison's Song of Solomon. But say that, uh, say, I'm going okay, to... that's not a joke. You are for real doing this, and so please boldly say what that is right now. It's called "This Could Be Us," but you keep voting Republican. And right now there's a test episode up. I haven't had a chance to put other episodes up because I was so busy, but now I have time. I mean, mm-hmm. I need a microphone, but I'll just, you know, work with what I have. But yeah. yeah. Yep. We will be tuning in to you and your quest for Emiliarism. You have ignited, a, a, you have ignited a, a new like i'm so glad this happened guys i know that like people don't like to like when they're trying to do these, like professional podcasts they don't like to like talk about like they don't like to go off book uh, i'm really glad that the one last viewer that we're about to leave and yolanda and i the three of us in this space in and out i'm so glad that you reached out i'm so glad that i leaned into my fears and said let's talk tomorrow night I'm so glad this happened because you literally deposited a word in me that I could never forget. Um, and you I'm ha- glad. And you've inspired, um, you have inspired me to keep showing up. Like if, like I said, if the one person is viewing, that is one person that's viewing. It's meant for me to give my my love in the spirit of meliorism freely to that one person, and then watch how that one person that's watching. Watch how their lives exponentially affect the the tens and hundreds and thousands of others. What we've done tonight and what we've said yes to Yolanda is a yes to uh, to a yes to us, and also a yes to our gifts to the world. So I want to thank you for coming on tonight. I want to thank you for having me. This is wonderful. Thank you so so very much. Like this, this is going to be this is going to be one of those things where, I, like, because the way I'm set up, and if coronavirus lets me live, let me tell you something. Twenty years from now, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be clipping pieces of this shit and being like, twenty years ago, this lovely soul. I would have said something crazier, but I don't know how you feel about the language. If I if, if I knew that you felt cool about the language, I'd be like this bitch taught me about ameliorism. <laughs> <laughs> on a on a on a was it Monday or Tuesday? Oh shit, it's Tuesday. Tuesday. On Tuesday night, this bitch taught me about ameliorism and how like like that is a label that I can boldly apply to my life and others will about the ways in which we want to imagine a world of our choosing. Like this is Mm -hmm. the moment. I'm not going to cry about it again, but like, like if we take every moment as a gift, somebody this morning because of coronavirus and other things did not wake up. If I take this moment as a gift because I'm a motherfucker that's breathing and alive, your ass came onto this whole internet and taught me about ameliorism and how that's... Ameliorism. Ameliorism. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Yeah, ameliorism is another thing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The wine, the wine and my (laughs) belief... I'm drinking wine out of a mug in my Believe mug. Um, yes, it, me. Wait, meliorism is what you gave right. me, and I am so thankful. Have a great night. You too. Okay, you're I lo- a blessing. I'm gonna text you a thank you message, but um, like this is really really cool, and will be forever. Uh enshrined for the rest of our lives because the way the internet works we will always have we will always have this moment of of truth telling and love awesome have a good night okay i love you okay love you bye